Hey guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. Here we are diving right back into the massive ball pit of unused content that is Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. In case you haven't seen my first Lost Bits video, I went over a bunch of pre-release changes as well as several maps and areas that go unused in this game, so be sure to check out that one as well if you're interested. In this video though, we'll go over a bunch of unused graphics, mechanics, audio things, and more. And there's still so much to talk about that I've decided to actually make yet another part after this one, so if you enjoy this, make sure you're subscribed with the bell to be notified when the next part is up. Anyways, with all that said, it hey, what? Hi, take this map, smash the like button, it's time to find some lost bits. Alright, let's first start off with some unused models, animations, and graphics. First up, we got just a model of a hand. It's thought that this hand might have belonged to Vanessa, specifically perhaps for a first-person view as it's speculated that there might have once been a segment in the game where you would have had to play as her as hinted by some unused audio clips, which we'll come back to later. Then next up, there's this unused model of a frozen variant of one of the Glamrock Endo enemies. Now apparently some parts of this Endo do actually appear in the first security office section in the game here, including its head, but the full model is never used. Furthermore, there are unused voice lines and subtitle text for both Gregory and Freddy in the game that suggest that this model would have been used for a scrapped mission in the game, dealing with adjusting the temperature in a boiler room to warm up the room with the frozen endo. This would be in order to get some sort of camera. Perhaps this was the original way the player was to get the Faz camera that you normally get in the Gator Golf area. Anyways, here are the unused voice clips for this. That endo's frozen solid. It's holding some sort of... Camera? Now personally, I hate dealing with the endos, so I can't really say I miss this fella not being added in. But on the flip side, next, what I think certainly is a shame that didn't make it in is this Magician Bot. Now a decrepit version of the Magician Bot is seen in the game seated at this table with some other bots, but this working, cleaned up version is never normally seen. And in addition to just the model being left in, there are also several voice clips that give us insight into the Magic Bot's show that I guess it would perform. It's honestly pretty funny, and I'm sure it would have been an awesome addition, so it sucks that I got the snips. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Fazbear Theater. Now enjoy the mystery and magic of the one and only Staff Bot. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what I am about to show you may confound and confuse you. Some may become scared, yet I implore you, do not be frightened by the mystical powers I possess. Do not fear the unknown, but be warned. The unknown is both dangerous and uncontrollable in the wrong hands. Now, for my first trick, I will pull a rabbit out of my hat. Error, no rabbit found. Error, I gotta get a new hat. I need a new hat. You sir, is that a coin behind your ear? I have no ears. No, because I now have it here in my hand. See, here, in my hand. Ooh. Now, for some hypnotism, I will now pick an audience member at random. You, sir. Who, me? We have never met before. No, I have never seen you before in my life. Sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. I am human sleeping. I cannot sleep. I am a robot. Can I have another volunteer? I hope I get picked. I hope I do not get picked. No volunteers. For my next trick, I will make the audience disappear. Close your eyes and count to three. One, two, three. Wow, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Based on the announcer mentioning that this was at the Faz Theater, this may have also been the original concept for the show on stage before it was changed to the Comedy Bot. And speaking of the Comedy Bot, although in the final game it just appears as any old run-of-the-mill bot, there's actually a unique unused model for it left over in the files of the game. This model would have had the bot sporting a nice bow tie, vest, bowler hat, and apparently it was planned to hold a microphone as well. I have absolutely no idea why this was scrapped in favor of just a regular staff bot, as this unique one looks way better. Next, although there aren't proper leftover models for them, there are textures for two more unused staff bot variants. The first of these is a mime bot, and there's also textures left in the game for an associated hat for it. Then secondly, there's textures for an alien bot, not to be confused with the staff bots with just the alien hats. These ones appear to have taken the alien role much more seriously. 
It's very likely though that these were also once planned to be seen in the Phaser Blast section of the game, as there's also an emissive texture that appears to reveal a few target points that the player might have had to aim for with the blaster. It's unfortunate these weren't fully realized, cause they would have looked awesome I think. Now next up, not an unused model itself, but there is an emissive texture in the game left over for Moondrop in which it appears that both his face and stars on his pants would start to glow, which I think is pretty cool. Next, there are several animations for some models that are left over unused in Security Breach. First off, the super not disgusting looking burn trap has a death animation that never gets used. This animation appears to show Burn Trap getting burned as he struggles to what looks like put out the flames before he ultimately falls and succumbs to the damage. So I guess before it was changed to a pre-rendered cutscene for Burn Trap's death? Question mark. At one point, the player might have seen Burn Trap burn right before Gregory's eyes. Then next is an animation for Moonbro here, tagged with teaser in its file name, and yep, that's because this is actually the same animation that's used for one of the teaser trailers for this game. I guess this animation was made specifically for this trailer. In a similar fashion, there are three animations that were used for the Freddy and Friends on tour short animation teasers for this game, but they don't go used anywhere else. These include an animation of Moondrop spinning his head and attacking after transforming from Sundrop from the second episode, DJ Music Man walking from the third episode, which was cool to see in full, as in the episode you can only see his legs, or arms. And lastly, there's an animation of Vanny that's from the fourth episode of the show, in which she moves her head closer to the camera. This animation is pretty funny, as although the full model is used, only the head and torso appear to move forward, leaving the rest of the appendages… yeah. And the last unused animation here is another really cool one, as it's actually an unused jump scare animation for… one of the Moondrop plushes? Although seen benign in the final game, there is coding left over for an item randomizer. And it's thought that this was for a scrap survival mode in the game, where there was a random chance that the player would just get jump scared with a moon plush when opening a present. Next, there are unused Roxy Raceway graphics for the animatronics. Now, although the one for Freddy is partially seen on this screen near the bumper cars area here, there are actually full sets of sprites for these animations for Monty, Chica, and of course Roxy as well. Each appears slightly different too, with Freddy seeing a cactus on the curved track and Chica with some pylons, then having a straight road Monty would have some power lines to his right, while Roxy just has an open road. Now if you didn't catch the little easter egg here, these all appear to be a direct reference to Mario Kart 64, right down to the minimap and the player icons on the left here. Although the bottom sections of these animations look like they were probably going to be used for an animated banner or something, it's unclear if the upper sections were all going to be signs like the Freddy one that's used, but seeing as how it looks like all of these were planned to be seen together since we can see their placements in the race, they almost look like they were planned to be seen on the Drive arcade games or on the four large TV screens above the racetrack or something. But regardless what they were meant for, I really love this little reference to Mario Kart. And lastly here, there is an unused graphic that, at first glance, appears to be an eye for an animatronic or something. Well, it turns out that this is actually an image of HAL 9000, the computer antagonist most famous from the 1968 classic sci-fi film 2001 A Space Odyssey. In fact, this exact image appears to be the first one that you see on Google when searching for HAL 9000. What purpose this image was to serve in a FNAF game, however, is still currently unknown. Next, more so unseen rather than unused, is just a cool bit of info regarding the Princess Quest minigames found in Security Breach. Well, before that, for starters, as an update to my previous FNAF VR video in which I mentioned that there were leftover unused graphics for the princess swinging a sword as well as graphics for an old man, well, it turns out that both of these did finally go on to be used in this game. Anyways, the cool tidbit I wanted to discuss is that the princess is actually given a name in the game's files this time around. She is actually referred to as Cassidy in the files, and some believe that this may be a reference to the name of one of the missing kids that was kidnapped by William Afton. Regardless, cool to see her given a name now, albeit hidden in the files. 
Next up, there are various remnants in the files of the game that suggest that at one point it looks like there was a scrapped minigame segment in Roxy's Raceway that would have presumably had the player take control of the staff bot in the go-kart after repairing its head. First, there's leftover coding for various things, some rather specific like cart air resistance, lateral friction, checkpoints, and more. There's also some unused heads-up display graphics, including what appears to be a speedometer, and in addition to all of that, there are also several unused voice lines that appear to have been intended for this section. Happy birthday. Lightly give it some gas. Let off the clutch. Wrong way. Avoid the red asphalt. Guide right. Careful now, not too fast. Merge into traffic. Yield to traffic. Watch the curb. Avoid the hones. Take the cart out of neutral. Release the handbrake. And if all of that wasn't enough, just recently it looks like someone was actually able to get the go-kart functionality loaded back into the game, as seen here in this gameplay footage. Here we can see all the UI graphics as they were meant to be seen, the speedometer is functional, the model of the go-kart is seen, there's text here for lap times, and the craziest thing of all is that when crashing into Chica here, we can see her ragdoll just before the player gets a game over. Does this necessarily imply that you were once meant to drive around the Pizzaplex and make some animatronic roadkill? Not exactly, but hey, it's still pretty funny. The driving mechanics in this footage definitely seem pretty rudimentary. I don't think it's any surprise why this wasn't added in yet, at least not in the state we see it here. But nonetheless, not only would this have probably been a cool little minigame, it also would have made the Roxy's Raceway segment more memorable. I don't know, the other boss fights aren't anything special either, but I guess compared to decommissioning Monty or Chica, to me, Roxy's Raceway just kind of feels like it has a lot of missed potential, especially since it basically boils down to just a cutscene and a short chase sequence. Now moving along, let's go to some unused audio stuff, of which this game actually has a lot. First are several music tracks that are left over unused in the files. There's a bunch here including remixed tracks from past FNAF games like Sister Location, Ultimate Custom Night, and Freddy in Space 2. In the interest of time, I won't play the tracks in their entirety here, but as always, if you want to listen to them in full, head on over to the cutting room floor, which I'll have linked for you in the description below. Anyways, here's a quick sample of each. Now next up, in addition to the music, we've went over a bunch already, but Security Breach has several additional voice lines that got cut from the game. First are several unused Faz facts that would have been spoken by the Dread Unit announcer guy that apparently I sound like while the player was inside an elevator. Did you know that everyone loves pizza? Yes, it's true. Based on a double-blind study from a leading Fazbear publication and scientists, 100% of those questioned would choose pizza over any other food group, even people with wheat and dairy allergies. This has been another fun Faz fact. Did you know that bears like pizza sauce more than honey? It's true. Before their extinction, bears were known to attack pizza delivery trucks more than any other food service vehicles. This has been another fun Faz fact. Did you know that birthday wishes only come true at Freddy Fazbear's? It's true. 
Kids who have home birthdays have fewer friends and parents who don't love them. This has been another fun Faz fact. Those uh, sure are some fun facts. We are to learn that bears are extinct in the FNAF universe. Then next, there's an unused clip of the announcer. Now it's time for a classic Fazbear cartoon. It's thought that this classic Fazbear cartoon would have been one of the episodes of the Freddy and Friends on Tour show that might have been shown at the Faz Theater. Next, there are several unused lines related to Fazer Blast, including giving more instruction, as well as joining the blue team instead of the orange team as you do in the final version. Ah, Fazer Blast, sport of kings. You will need to win the game in order to receive your very own Fazer Blaster. Good luck. Calling all recruits. Fazer Blast is a high intensity space combat simulation. Suit up and save the universe as you blast everyone and everything with high tech laser effects. Blast strangers, blast your friends, beat the superstar score, and get a free Fazer Blaster gun. Enlist now. Game for the glowing targets on your opponent's vest and pull the trigger. Successfully shooting your opponent will deactivate your opponent's weapons for 5 seconds. Based on the color of the target you will receive between 1 to 100 points. You are on the blue team, soldier. Report to the blue hallway. You will be playing base attack. Capture the three enemy bases by defeating each guard and then pressing the button under the base flag. Your health points are displayed on your headset. Each time you are hit, you lose one health. Each time you capture a flag, you will regain health. If you lose all your health, you lose the game. Too bad. You can press the reset button to try again. Great job. You qualified to enter the Superstar Club. Come in and take a souvenir Fizzer Blast prize. Hold on, soldier. Return your equipment to the rack to exit. Return your gear or I will be forced to call security. Next up are several voice lines for an unused sales bot staff bot variant. These sales bots were, of course, all about selling and would also try to apparently sell a red balloon, and some believe it might have been this one in the warehouse area. Furthermore, since there are both male and female versions of these bot voice clips, it's speculated that there were going to be at least a few of them around the Pizzaplex, perhaps either around any one of the little kiosk things or at the prize counter area. Red Balloon, Sunny. Buy this. Spend money here. I sell things that you want. No free samples. Sell, sell, sell. Pressure sales mode activated. Keep smiling. Next, I mentioned the family of decrepit staff bots earlier, but it seems like they were once planned to actually have some dialogue instead of just creepily sitting there. This short bit basically had the mom leaving the father bot here. I am home. You are home early. I quit my job. What about the children? We have a down payment on a new closet. I do not know what I was thinking. I was compelled to leave my post. This is no longer working. I am leaving. Do not go. May you be happy in the life you have chosen. I've seen several people in my comments talk about how this family of staff bots is supposed to represent the Afton family. Now I'm no FNAF theory guy, but let me know in the comments if this dialogue at all supports this theory or not. Anyways, in Security Breach, I'd say the staff bot voice that's used is a pretty good fit, but there's actually some unused voice clips featuring what appears to be an early alternate version of the text-to-speech bot that's used. Hello, please take this map. Thank you, please enjoy. Halt, VIP members only. Although still not a real voice, it does sound much more realistic than the bot voices we got, and I don't think this one would have fit nearly as well. Similarly, there are some more unused staff bot lines that use yet another voice. This is actually the same voice that is used by the staff bots in the Fazer Blast segment, but some of these lines don't appear to fit with that area, so it's theorized this could have been yet another early contender for the main staff bot voice. This is your final warning. He's hiding over there. Warning. Obstruction detected. Security breach. The place is closed. Next, there are a few mop bot lines that were actually used when Security Breach first released, but due to a bug where sometimes the audio didn't play and only subtitles would appear, these lines were taken out of the game in an update patch. These still exist in the files though, for both the male and female janitor mop bots. The Mega Pizza Plex is closed. Leave the premises or I will be forced to call security. Exit the building. This is your final warning. 
Alert. Alert. Security. And lastly here for the unused voice lines, at least those that have been documented so far, we got several unused voice lines for Vanessa herself. These unused voice clips make up almost half of all of her voice clips in the entire game, leading some to believe that she was once planned to have a much larger role in the game, with some even speculating, like I mentioned earlier, that she was once planned to be playable. Anyways, here are all of the Vanessa voice clips that don't go used. Gregory? Gregory? Hello? I'm here to help. Gregory? Is that you? Gregory, I can keep you safe. Please come out. I'm here to help you. Is someone there? You've got to trust me. I'm sorry. I think we lost him. Over here. I found him. Contact me if you see him. Check the area. He can't be far. He's here. Get over here. Where did he go? Monty, Roxy, Chica. Report. I don't know how to fix it. What am I going to do? If Freddy was working, we would have him by now. Okay, I didn't mean to. He walks through every security door as if he owns the place. No, I can find him. It won't be like the last one. I have the second key. Look, I don't know where it is. Do you know how many arcade games there are? I'll find it eventually. I've looked everywhere. It's not here. Now next up, kind of adjacent to the unused voice clips, now let's take a look at some unused text that's left in the game. First is some alternate or scrapped dialogue for the game's intro for which only subtitle text is left over. Gregory's original line mentions that Vanessa wants to kill him rather than get him. There's a scrapped bit where Freddy would mention that he actually remembers Gregory from some unknown event that's completely open to speculation. Freddy was to warn Gregory to not let something find him. And lastly, Freddy explaining that previous Freddy models had done some bad things in the past, and that this version of him is, according to him, completely safe. Then, also for the intro, there's an alternate subtitle for the first message Freddy sends to the Faz Watch. Here originally it looks like the back room was known as the maintenance closet, and he also mentions that he was programmed to not notice the button that opens the door to it. Then finally for the unused subtitles, also near the intro, there's alternate text for the utility segment when Freddy takes Gregory to the first aid station. Instead of Freddy feeling that Greg is the incredibly vague broken and that something is wrong, the original line was Freddy was to detect Gregory bleeding, and then noticing that his arm is badly cut. I mean, I guess they were trying to keep the game more kid-friendly or something by removing this reference to blood, but like, the game is already rated T for teen, and I don't think this would have pushed it to anything higher. So yeah, I don't know, it seems like a pretty odd change to keep Gregory's injury so vague here. And next, we got some non-subtitle text that goes unused as well. There's some basic tutorial text for the Faz Watch, some unused difficulty text, which we'll revisit in the next video, as well as a few bits of text that detail that at one point, the game would have had time actively passing, instead of just progressing whenever the player reaches certain plot points, and specifically, it would even go while the player is looking at the Faz Watch. This idea appears to have been still kicking at this point in development as seen in this trailer that we discussed in my previous video with the early Faz Watch design, as we can see it at a very precise time down to the minute, something that's only seen at certain few points in the final game. This, honestly, would have given this game a completely different feel, as there would constantly be pressure to progress in the game, kind of like Majora's Mask. And here we'll wrap things up for this second part. Next video, what I assume to be the last Security Breach one, at least for a while, we'll discuss some really cool scrapped menu options, a cut survival mode, as well as a whole bunch of awesome debug features. So again, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you're subscribed to find your way back for that one. Till then though, check out my other Lost Bits videos, and as always, I will see you in a bit.